you, you got, and if you guys have any problems hearing, let me know, and we're going to do our best to project since we're going to have multiple people. And we, when we get into discussion, if you're uh, watching this online, please speak up loudly enough that everybody can hear your comments or questions. Well, usually they put them in chat and then I repeat them to you. Okay. Yeah, so I speak up. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing I wanna start with is the title of this LDW. It is a misnomer. We will not be talking about dealing with problem members. We will be talking about dealing with problems that involve members. And I hate to put uh, uh, Monica's on uh, a member, because once you identify the person as the problem member, you're already halfway there to have made your, up your own mind as to uh, uh, what the problem is, and, uh, who's responsible, and who has to do things about it, when we all really have to deal with the problems that face our local groups. Now, everybody, uh, we're, we're gonna do some scenarios up here. And although one person will be designated the ombudsman, uh, you can pretend you're all ombudsmen. And what goes for ombudsmen also go for local officers because they can solve problems, particularly ones they're not personally involved with. And uh, even if they are, they should be part of it solution, not part of the problem. And every member uh, can use dispute resolution techniques, which we'll talk about today, to help resolve problems in the local group. Okay, so conflict, which is what we're, we're really talking about conflict and how to resolve. There are many different kinds of conflict. And if you think of it as a matrix, um, there are conflicts that are destructive, that can tear people down. There are conflicts that are constructive. Without conflict, we'd never have any new ideas and life would be a pretty boring place. So not all conflict is bad. And people have said life is a negotiation. Uh, and, and this is really true. Um, and you're always dealing with other people and uh, adjusting your own uh, expressed desires and needs and wants and uh, negotiating to achieve them while keeping other people still involved. So that's another dichotomy. You have conflict where you'll never be dealing with that person again. So you can be much more dogmatic about what you want because you don't care about an ongoing relationship. That's not the conflict we usually have in Mensa. When it's an ongoing relationship, you have to be concerned enough about the other person to make sure you keep them involved because you're gonna have a relationship with them for the long haul, most likely. So that's another dichotomy. And there are other different pigeonholes. And what you have to do really is decide what sort of conflict you're dealing with and what tools you have to deal with it. And we're gonna look at some of those tools today. Um, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this. Oh, one other thing. Um, there are conflicts that you're involved in yourself and how you act in those conflicts will uh, see whether you meet your own wants or needs and also whether it will be resolved or not. But uh, in this case, there are conflicts that you're not involved in, that you're, that you're actively trying to help resolve or not. Uh, maybe you're trying to be destructive for some reason, but third party conflicts with two other people or more are having conflict. And you're a third party to that but involved in the resolution of the conflict. Uh, it's also important when you think, you notice I said wants and needs. They are often not the same thing. There are all kinds of things you might want some of which are expendable. And if you don't get them, it'd be nice to have them, but so what? There are also things you really need and you're gonna push hard to try to get those needs met. So keep aware of the difference because in your life negotiations or conflict resolution, um, you're often looking for accommodation and compromise. 
And that means letting go of some of the wants that are not also needs. So you have things to trade. I found this in my, in my own life when I was negotiating. Hello. Oh, excuse me, please. One minute. No, don't get up. Okay. So leave it alone. Yeah. I'll leave it alone. Sorry. That's okay. I found this in my own life when I was negotiating international agreements, uh, treaties on behalf of the United States. When I would go into a, uh, a negotiating session with foreign officials, I knew what my bottom line was. I knew what I had to have, or we would not reach uh, our agreement on uh, the text for this particular uh, agreement or uh, treaty. So I, I had things I could give them, as, and, and you may find this amusing. I was in Bucharest, Romania for a one-day marathon negotiation. I was the sole U.S. negotiator. And both sides wanted this agreement to happen. It was restoring a, an agreement between our countries that we had before Kosciuszko came in and the U.S. said, no more, we're not dealing with this. Now that he was gone, uh, the Romanians wanted back in. We wanted them back in. We had a new text for the document. And that's what we were negotiating. I spent hours. We were getting nowhere. It was getting late in the day, five, six o'clock at night. We had not accomplished a darn thing. And I consider myself a pretty good negotiator. And I knew that this was something we all wanted. So I called for a break. I went, what in the world am I doing wrong? I suddenly realized that I had done nothing to meet the needs of the people on the other side of the table. They were officials, bureaucrats, whatever you want to call it. They had their own needs as individuals, as people, and they had career goals. And they couldn't go back to their bosses and said, okay, the US gave us this document and we agreed that it would be signed. They needed something to take back. See, we put something over on the United States. Well, I had gimmies. I had things I did not need. They were wants, but they weren't needs. So we came back to the table and said, look, on this one item we were talking about, I can, I can yield on that. I can give you that. We can take that out of the document. Suddenly, the faces lit up. And within an hour, we had a finished document to send forward. We initialed it. And uh, it was signed a few days later. So think of the other person's needs. All negotiation is personal. What you think it's about, it's not often about that. It's about other things that are going on. And as uh, local officers or ombudsmen, part of your job is to ferret those out and see what the needs really are. And sometimes problems will go away. Why don't we get started on the first scenario? And um, here we have a... Uh, an individual, Tracy, who is uh, at a party or OG, I forget which. And um, Tracy has some complaints about the LOCSEC and the XCOM. And uh, she has a, a way of expressing those concerns, legitimate as they might be, in ways that are abrasive and set people off. And people consider her a problem member. Whether she is or not, we'll find out. But again, I don't like to think of people as problem members. I think rather members with problems. And she's got a legitimate one. Boy, she's difficult to do. She has a friend, Dana. Who is Dana today? Okay, great. Uh, Morgan is hosting the party. So who is, who is Morgan? Okay, she's the party host. And you know that the host of parties uh, regardless of what the rules might be for an official event, the host of the party being that this is in her home, she's got quite a bit of leeway, quite a bit of power in what she can do if somebody is acting up in a way that displeases her. Uh, her concerns about that can be arbitrary, capricious, and final. So she, as they say for Carnelli and other events. So she's got, even though a small role, she's got a lot of power in the situation. And finally, we have uh, 
Avery. That's the Lopsec, and we'll see how uh, that's Nancy, um, your illustrious RVC. But she, for today, she won't be Nancy. She'll be Avery, the Lopsec. And um, then Audrey will play the ombudsman and try to wrap things up when we're done. So let's get started. If you all will come up here and uh, we can. I'll get, I'll, what I'd like is to get some clusters. Freya, I've got two clusters on the registration table. Let's have. Uh, uh, Tracy, down. Uh, how about right here? Lynn? Oh, this is the problem. I'll tell you what, let's, let's separate Tracy and uh, uh, the look section. Where do you want me? Uh, you're the ombudsman? It doesn't matter because you're not part of the initial stuff. Oh, so okay. And then do you want to take the seat? No, I don't. Well, you're already being a problem. So I'm always a problem. You're, you're in character. And uh, Nancy over here. And I'm sorry, what are you doing? Morgan, okay. You'll sit in the remaining seat. So, so where's my friend? And there? sorry, Bruce, you don't get I, a seat. I'm not a stand up. No, we can oh, grab a chair. Right I, I, I can get another chair. Yep, Dave, I'll get it for you. I don't need to be on camera. I don't either. They can hear my voice. Yeah, just make sure you speak loudly so they can hear. Most of you do have big mouths. So okay, that's not well, <laughs> and if you'd like to take your well, mask off, that would probably help. Seats, well, I brought up the extra chair, so you did too? He did too. Hey. Okay, doesn't matter. All right, so we're, we're starting off. <laughs> this is the lobe set, okay. Uh, you're the host, host, the- uh, Problem. The problem, so, the so-called problem member. And the, I'm, I'm the friend of the problem, problem, problem member's friend. friend. Trouble and trouble eventually, who's not really on the scene now, the ombudsman. So, uh, Tracy, why don't you express your concern in a really obnoxious manner? <laughs> you. you know, Dana, the party's cool, but it's always the same old thing. And the leadership in this group does nothing. It's getting really exhausting coming out and not having anything to do with the same old, same old, all the time. You, no, I mean, it's, it's past the time for elections. When was the last time we had an election? We don't even know what the XCOM is doing. They don't tell us anything. They don't help us do anything. It's like, oh, hey, there's a lunch once a month. This is it. Tracy, I, I work really hard on this party. You know, I'm, I'm, I don't want it to be ruined. You know, I have been cooking and cleaning for ages. Please, can you just I, keep I, it down? I, a think you're bit? Do, I think you're doing a great job. I'm, I'm just unhappy that just, you're like the one bright, the shining thing. Well, I appreciate that. But could you just like, you know, calm down and, and maybe, maybe just like, um, but, let's talk about the weather or something, okay? You know, fine. I'll, I'll, I'll just. I'll just contact uh, the RBC. This is in her discussions, Tracy makes some real specific complaints about the low set. And maybe you can tell us something about your, what you don't like about the low set. Low set runs the group, I won't say with an iron hand, but doesn't help anybody. You know, somebody wants to host something. There's no assistance. There's no guidance. We haven't had elections. It's like she wants to stay in power and just have the title and not do anything about it. Oh, right. I, I'm, I'm offended. <laughs> <laughs> when was the last time we had elections? It's in our bylaws to have them every no, two years. Nobody ever wants to be it. So we, we have the same people. We have an election every year and we do elect the same people. But What are you doing you know, to try to get other people? We've got 300 people in the group. It's four people who are running the group all the time. 
Well, that's because nobody else will step up and take it. Have you asked anybody? Have you reached out? Well, yeah, I put a, a, a blurb in the newsletter two months ago. A blurb in a newsletter. Once a year, or once every two years. That's, and that's how you're trying to get that, volunteers? That should have been enough. Are you kidding? Tracy, Tracy I don't want this to, to be at my open house. Can we can, can I have this discussion like some other time? Yeah, fine. I, who I, needs I to stay in this group anyhow? I'm 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 just just really Stop. Question. So, what I always like, I always imagine positions. The minute someone's complaining, I listen to them and say, listen, I hear you and I agree you. All complaints are considered um, an offer to volunteer. Is that what I'm hearing? You're volunteering to do this yourself because you're going to do it better? Okay, we'll get into how to resolve yeah. this <laughs> later. Let's let's finish the scenario okay. and let the ombudsman do her work to try to figure out okay. what the heck is going on here. So, uh, do we have anything more on this scenario? I think we've pretty much got the basic ideas. I've covered the base without saying Actually, anything about Well, myself. my feelings are hurt because I've done the best I can, and if you think you can do better, you should just do it yourself. <laughs> Well, if I had any idea what I was supposed to be doing, other than what's in the bylaws, yeah, I, I, I might, but I've only just started coming out to things because of personal issues, and this is not exactly encouraging me to come to anything else or be active. Morgan, I, I don't know how you feel about this, but I think that she deserves to be brought up on charges. I can bring you back up on charges, too. <laughs> okay. Let's because stop. you're running the group and you should be doing something better than what you're doing. Let's stop. Um, okay. <laughs> Let's not have conflict up here. Now, the ombudsman, for you, um, do you want to ask some questions of these people and try to get to the bottom of this if, so we can help you out how to resolve it? I'm so Audrey, you're going to have to speak okay. up. Well, I'm these, sorry. Are, these are confidential discussions, as if nobody else is up here except the ombudsman and the person that she's talking. Tracy, I've heard that you're really, really upset. I'm so sorry that you're upset with the dementia group. How can we help you other than change everything that we do? How can you be part of it? What should we be doing to help you be more comfortable with us? <laughs> I'm, I have a hard time dealing with people, which is why I haven't come out with them. Um, I've been tested, I'm on the spectrum. If things don't go right, and I'm, I'm very picky about how things are done. If, if the rules say do it this way, it needs to be done that way. It's, it's just the way I am. And we're not doing things the way, I mean, we're not doing anything by the bylaws. And if we're not going to do it by the bylaws, why have them? You know, what, what is the group supposed to be doing for us? And I can try to help, but like I said, I have I have my own personal issues that I have to that I'm learning to deal with. And an environment like this doesn't help. And surely we understand that. I understand that. And I want you to be happy in that group. We got there are some things we have to remember that everybody in the group all of our offices also have other jobs, families, and issues. And yes, sometimes they don't do a really great job. But you know what? Whenever we see someone not doing a great job, we can not put our hand up to take their job. That might be a bit much. But maybe we can help them a little bit by taking on one little section of it. Yeah, you were, I heard you saying earlier that there are no elections, that, that the low set only put a little blurb in. Well, I know that you're a skilled writer. Maybe you can write up a better blurb that she put in and a more effective blurb and put it in more than the newsletter. And yes, you wouldn't be taking on a big role because you're such a valuable writer that we could use you, we need you, we don't want you unhappy. And, and you know, there are a lot of other people who have issues too, but, but you are our main focus right now. And maybe by doing just a little teeny bit, writing up a better blurb, putting it in the newsletter and in everywhere else you can think of. And then slowly, very slowly, start to come out of your shell because I think you will have a wonderful time here in Mesa. 
and, and um, do you think of, can you think of any other ways that you might be happier that the, other than changing all of the bylaws, which may be needed, but it's not going to happen right now, how you could be happier? Any tell us things that you can do, maybe to help make it a little bit easier for you. I'm, I'm willing to put stuff into the newsletter um, and help that way. But I want to know that there's going to be an effort to actually get people to do things and not, not being so in charge, because that's the way it feels like. She runs everything. Um, I've heard of people going to her with ideas and having them struck down because that's not her thing. Okay. So I don't think it's just me. Let's move so on. I'm, I'm willing to okay. help and, and write things. Let's move on and talk to the LOCSEC. Feels really abused by this. You have been folks at such a long time, and we're so pleased that we have someone of your caliber running our library. It's just it's been a benefit to all of us. Uh, there are some feelings that maybe we could be doing more, uh, which is not to say that you're not doing a fantastic job. But is there anything that you think that maybe we, as a group, or you, or any of your offices, could do to make new members like Tracy feel a little bit more welcome? Well, I guess I could try to involve her more in the group. Maybe I can make her the, the election chair, and she can start asking people if they want to. That sounds involved. like a wonderful idea. That would that would make her feel involved. We might get because I know I've heard you say you're so tired of being rogue sick, but there's no one else six out years, there. Six years. I know that that's a long time. We are so lucky that we had you all that time. But maybe with her help, we can get someone to help you, so you won't have to do it every single year. Okay, let's stop the simulation and let's talk about this for maybe five minutes tops because we have another simulation to do. Uh, I must say I've given this uh, LDW several times and this is the first time we've come up with some real solutions within the scenario. So I'm really pleased. <laughs> the characters did a good job while staying in character of finding ways to contribute to the solution. And one of the good parts about handling things in an informal manner, uh, in other words, by the officers themselves, by the office man, it avoids the disciplinary uh, process. I mean, here we have a case where Tracy has a legitimate gripe. There. Um, in the original scenario, there was nothing in the newsletter looking for candidates because uh, things were running fine. The four people on the XCOM uh, didn't even have XCOM meetings because they could talk to each other by telephone and take care of all the business. And I've seen groups like this. I had a group like this, a case with a group like this, where uh, they hadn't had elections in years. And things were running fairly well despite that, but the members weren't involved at all. So she's got a legitimate gripe. She just gripes in a way that puts everybody's teeth on it. She, she, and now we know what some of what's behind that. Um, and this is not to say that everybody on the spectrum or with what we used to call Asperger's in this case, um, apparently that's no longer a separate uh, issue. Uh, not everybody has these particular problems, but there are socialization problems sometimes. And she acknowledges that that uh, affects the way she acts. And uh, apparently she's been doing better with it. So that's a good thing. But uh, we want all the members to have a good experience in Mensa. And if they're causing what's, what are perceived to be problems, maybe we can help resolve that. And we came up with some good ways now. Does anybody else, uh, uh, since we are the audience as well as the <laughs> characters, and we have some people at home as well, uh, any other possible approaches to this? One question I just want to ask is how Tracy might just be a little more subtle at meetings, maybe not quite as abrasive, 
we didn't get near that in a real counseling and mediation session. Not only was that a great idea that was here, but um, would something we'd launch, you don't do it in three minutes, but something you'd launch and just say, you know, sometimes people get really uncomfortable with loud voices and anger. I wonder if there's a way, can you think of a better way that we might express that so that she, he, he, and that one don't all get uncomfortable at the party? Well, here we have Dana, who ha has a trying to calm her down. Well, <laughs> but maybe the ombudsman himself, uh, one other approach is um, for Dana and other possible friends to set up something with Tracy that when she starts getting out of hand, as it were, with her complaints, maybe even like a safe word sort of thing, where uh, when she hears that, she agrees, whatever it is, just to stop dead in the tracks and listen to what the friend has to say. That's one possible approach. Now, you can't have somebody, you know, riding shotgun 100% of the time, but things like that. Um, could help uh, enlisting others in the solution. Um, so, yeah. I have a question. Do you, you know, people don't hear themselves. There was one person who I hosted a bunch of things in Fort Mill long before the pandemic, who all he did was constantly complain. It was such a volume of negativity that was going to explode. And of course, volunteer for nothing. And finally, unfortunately, I'm from Brooklyn and I used to go to a lot of comic clubs. I said, listen, you know, I consider this an offer to volunteer. Oh no, I volunteer for that. I said, then shut up. <laughs> and and um and then like again, I said, listen, I, I, I'm walking away because I can't take this much negativity. You know, unfortunately, I'm very, I'm not soft like you. And he said, Am I that neck? I said, well, he said, you know, someone has to criticize. So who at the end of their life says, I wish I'd been more negative, I wish I'd been more judgmental, I wish I'd been more critical. Who says that at the end of their life? Oh, he said, <laughs> and never showed up in a meeting again. <laughs> you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> and, you know, so, you know, but some people really don't see it. Maybe it'd be helpful to videotape them. I don't think they, I mean, just as a small example, this person had three PhDs from Ivy League colleges and he had never met a Jewish person before me. I said, of course you've met Jewish people at Harvard and Princeton and, you know, and he only monologued. He had zero interest in another human being. So these are people extremely on the autistic spectrum and I have no patience with them. I'm so bad. Okay. So you find someone who has patience to deal with them, I guess. Let's just talk for a second about autism. Well, let's, let's, let's stretch it out a little bit further. Uh, let's talk about neurodiversity and autism is only a part of that and physical diversity because there are people with um, physical ailments like blindness or deafness or partway there, and the difficulties that that cause, learning disabilities. There's all kinds of things. We're not just talking about uh, people with autism. They see the world a little bit differently. And that gives them the opportunity to be a resource for different views and approaches that other people might not think of. They tend to have a lot to contribute and a lot of difficulty contributing. And when we look at things that way, it, it, this is not to say that safety is not important also. And we'll get to that right, as the next scenario is about safety. Uh, but uh, we need to make Mensa so good for these members that we can have their contributions while avoiding to the extent we can the perceptions of them as even more weird than most Mensa's. And I consider weirdness to be a bit of a compliment because we're all weird. We start off being weird by being in that uh, the upper two percentile ranks in intelligence and we tend to get weirder. Some are more weirder than others. And sometimes that really bothers people. But um, being bothered is different from being um, attacked or anything like that. And I, I think we need to find a way to help channel people to where their talents and, and unique viewpoints 
can contribute to the organization instead of tearing it down. Let's stop the scenario. We don't have a lot of time and move on to the next one. You might as well stay up here uh -huh. because we're all we got. Okay, in scenario two, we have a problem member who is our former ombudsman. <laughs> and uh, I don't need those back. <laughs> no, okay. and they're on my computer. I just them on. Uh, and that is Jamie, who will be played by Audrey. Now, I need a young man, and there's only one. <laughs> man. So, uh, Joe, Alvin Joe, Joe, let's pretend you're quite a bit young. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, my, my wife does. <laughs> Go for it. No, that's yeah, part yeah. of it. But trust me. Oh, somebody know. gets to touch you by bullet. <laughs> <laughs> but before I'm asking him first. You're out of character. Yes, yeah, so I'm out of character. Okay. Because this standing. does call for non-sexual touching. <laughs> well, I wasn't here too Well, don't grab the wrong part. <laughs> I, I trust you. Okay. If you manage to offend me, I will pay you. <laughs> this sounds like an interesting challenge. <laughs> now we have a low set. Oh. Yeah. And of course, um, you could be low set now. <laughs> Been there, done that. Yeah, and an too. ombudsman. And I, I don't have two more roles, so one of you two can I'm, sit out. I'm happy to sit out. Okay. Oh, that should be me too. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. And <laughs> read, read over what you have here. And in particular, um, if there are specific points that you are you know, asking you to make, particularly the ombudsman, or questions to ask, ah. be sure you ask them because they will trigger. I, I see why you asked them. This is necessary for the acting. Yeah. Yes. yes. Oh, yes. I'm like a person. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. No, yeah, yeah, this is absolutely, that was absolutely necessary. Okay, we'll read these over and let me know when you're done, and then we'll get started. <laughs> okay. While we're while they're reading that over, do the people at home have anything that they want to contribute to the conversation? Um, this is Denise Yancey. Can I chime in? Yes, please. Okay. Um, for the I, I put it in the chat, but um, I was thinking that I'll, I'll just read the, the chat. I'm not sure putting someone who has acknowledged she has trouble talking to people in charge of elections, maybe a different non people position would be better and still keep her involved, like maybe newsletter editor or webmaster or program chair. Well, you raise a good point, and that might not be the final solution, but we also shouldn't make assumptions that because a person acts one way in one given situation that they would necessarily act that way in another but it is something to be concerned about and to question whether or not that might be within her capabilities um, or whether we should look for something else so you do raise a good point uh, but let's not make assumptions about people either let's test those assumptions before we can I expand on the first? Yeah. Um, depending on the group that you're with, the election committee may be separate from the nominating committee. So in our case, I I got myself on the nominating committee as chair, so nobody could suggest that I run for office. <laughs> so I've been contacting people people mostly by email to encourage them to run. And I've been very successful about it, more successful than anybody else in my group in years, I think. But the election committee, pretty much their contact with the candidates will be write a statement of so much, send it to the editor, and then they run the election and don't have to deal with people. So somebody who has trouble dealing with people, they're involved, but they're not dealing with people. Mm. So that might be a safe position for them after all, if they knew exactly what the job was. Great idea. Okay, We're, we have some time constraints. Is everybody ready to start? Oh, sure. Meeting Joe on Felicity, who feels lonely and then you can't 
That was so nice. And I'm just so glad you're here. It's so nice to meet you. And you look so friendly. Yeah. 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 What made you come to Mensur RG? I just wonder what's going on. Just, just curious about any things. I, are you single, Joe? <laughs> well, yeah. I'm so glad to hear that. You know, sometimes it gets really lonely. And, um, I had, you know, just when I checked in, I guess they just had to have the, the sweet MD and, and I lucked out and I was the person they gave it to. Would you like to see it? No. <laughs> no. I understand. I, I, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it surely was so nice. Maybe we can meet again sometime during this RG and, and maybe we could talk a little more. That would be so nice to do that. Okay, but my husband's going to come. Okay, so we, we stop now, and now Joe goes to the log set and talks about what just happened. I'm trying to stick in the building. It's like not getting married. But anyway, I'm trying to sit in the house. I'm going to the log set. You're the log set. I'm new here, and then there's just this moment just perfect from an older lady. I'm like, She's older than me. I think she's drunk. Oh, I'm not sure, but you know, I don't just know. What did she actually do? Well, she kind of groped me, you know. But, well, she, 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 she didn't. She didn't actually grope me, but you know, it was made me feel uncomfortable. Oh, okay. Well, you're not the first person that has told me that they felt uncomfortable. <laughs> With, with uh, what's her name? Jamie. 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 With, with, with Jamie's action, she she does tend to come on a bit strong. Um, but but, but, I, but I, I doubt if you could actually call that a sexual assault. Um, yeah, I mean, she might be real uncomfortable. I mean, you know, it's, and it was if, if it, happened, it, if it happened to a woman, I, I get that. If it happened to a woman, you'd be all over it, but because it's a guy, it's like, eh, or that, so it's like, I, I think you should do something about it. I mean, what would you like me to do? Probably kick her out. At the very least, you know, just, just okay. give her help. You know. <laughs> okay. Do the um, same thing you do if it was if it was the male and female situation was reversed. Yeah, yeah. I, I well, I, I certainly thank you so much for coming to me, Joe. I, I, you're a very valuable member. We don't want to lose you. I will talk to Jamie um, again. <laughs> And, and ask her to tone down her, her activities. I, I, I think kicking her out might be a little bit much, but I will ask her to, to drink a little less and control her actions better. And you're so Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, uh, it says I go to Jamie next. Oh, Joe, yeah. Jamie, Joe came to me and he said that perhaps you were touching him in an unwanted manner. Is that possible? Isn't he cute? <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, he certainly is. He certainly is. Um, I didn't do anything wrong. Now, now, I do think he's cute, and, and I really liked him, and I thought, I thought maybe we could be friends. Yeah, but, I, 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 um, I, I, but I did nothing wrong. I, I sort of touched his arm, but I did nothing wrong. Well, you know, touching is sometimes unacceptable, and and it could get you kicked out of the events. You know, sometimes the AG chair can evict people from the AG for for unacceptable behavior, and and touching someone who does not invite it is is not acceptable. Um, I didn't know that. So you you need to. You need to be very sure that you have permission to, to touch somebody in any way, or it's, it's considered legally assault. How do you know? How, how do you know when when touching someone's arm is wrong and when it's right? And how do you know when to give an invitation 
to see your beautiful suite when you have a beautiful suite that hotel gave you. Yeah, right, right. Well, what, one thing would be if you would drink a little less. <laughs> I think that probably you would have had too many drinks and, and that clouded your judgment. So uh, I'd like it very much if you could drink less for the rest of this RG. <laughs> I will try to do that. Thank you for telling me. I certainly didn't mean to offend Joe because he's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's let the ombudsman get some questions. Uh, um, I'm trying to say who's so you. I, I go next. Yeah. Um, return to Joe. Yeah. Uh, Joe, I, I've spoken to Jamie and I've, I've told her very strongly that she, she really isn't allowed to accost members like that, especially the touching in unwanted manners. And I hope that we can avoid disciplinary action. So <laughs> yeah. Let's see how it goes. Yeah. Right. Change for sure. Now you're the ombudsman. You're up. And now yeah, I, 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 I need to tell you about something that's happened at this RG that I, I think the ombudsman should be aware of. You, you know we've had a problem with Jamie in the past and mm -hmm. she she kind of seeks out new members and and um, sidles up to them and maybe touches them inappropriately. And I've had to talk to her about um, uh, approaching Joe, who, who felt very uncomfortable with her behavior and, and asking her to hold her drinking down a little bit so that she doesn't do uh, unacceptable things and um, asked her especially not to touch new members in, in ways that, that are unacceptable. So I just wanted you to be up to speed with what's happening. Now I try to mm -hmm. Jamie, can I have a word with you? Yes, of course. Um, I've gotten word that there's been a small, I won't go as far as incident, but a little bit of upsetting behavior um, somebody felt that they were touched inappropriately and you didn't seem to stop. I did. I backed off as soon as he said no. He said no, he wasn't interested and I backed off and I was in control of my alcohol at all times. I, I, I did nothing wrong and I was in control okay. and I backed off. Okay, you're sounding a little defensive as if you're aware that you've got a problem. I never brought up alcohol. I just mentioned about touching. Um, and maybe you do need to monitor your alcohol intake or eat a little bit more when you're doing it. But you also may need to learn to read people's signals. I mean, think about when you were younger and you felt guys were hitting on you even when they didn't mean to. You may be projecting the same thing onto them. And it's a, it's a very fine line. And when we've been drinking, sometimes the filter, we kind of lose it a little bit. It's hard to be lonely here at an RG and then you meet someone you think is nice and it's lonely and no one talks to you at the whole RG and you walk around and no one says anything and they're sitting at tables and laughing and no one says, come sit here. Come. I, I, yes. Okay. Um, maybe we need to just sit down and figure out other ways for you to become part of some of these groups. I would like that. I would like, because I don't want to go around feeling like, have, have you been shut out from the lot? All my life. Okay. Men never liked me. Okay. Maybe this is some, maybe you're, okay, here's an example. When I was younger and wanted the attention, I was putting out vibes of being needy, and that turns people off. Um, it may be a matter of, yeah, okay, it doesn't matter if I'm, if I'm not, I'm going to sit over here and, and I've got a book out or something, or I've got some, I'm writing something down, taking notes maybe, I'm going to submit it to the newsletter, say, but nobody knows that, and people will see me doing something, I will come over and approach me. That's a good so, idea. so it, it may be in the way that you're approaching people, that some people are real sensitive, some people are really outgoing, and the idea is maybe just settle it down a little bit, down a notch or two, and see if that doesn't bring them to you rather than you going out to find them. That would be a great idea. You think you could help me get a little more? I would be happy to. Oh, thank you. That would be so nice. I appreciate that a lot. Okay. And and I would talk to a couple of people and kind of 
give you not so much a bodyguard, but somebody to introduce you around me. Should I and apologize to Cheryl? Or you think I should just stay away? Um, you can apologize and say you didn't realize you were overreacting, you were overreaching without permission. Um, yes, you can tell them you found them attractive. Do not be insulted, do not be offended. I'm not doing anything about it. But, and I'm sorry that I turned you off the way I did. I will do that. Thank you for your help. I appreciate that. Here we have. We're not done. I now have to talk to Jack. You talk to me. You got me talking to Jamie first. Yeah. Okay. You talk to her, then you talk to me. I whine about it, you know, and then and I stop off. I flat. <laughs> That pretty much well, the whole thing there. <laughs> well, I haven't spoken with you, so you don't know what I said to her. So, so, um, Joe, oh, I, I hear you had a problem, with Jamie, earlier. It got, it got back to my ears, yes, and yes, I, yes. I had a talk with her, um, and figured out what her problem, some of what her problem might be, and why she came on to you the way she did. Um, I'm just wondering, have you been? inappropriately approached in the past to make me defensive. Do you do you know how to say no strong enough to I think so. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um she will probably come around to apologize to you for her behavior. Um but she, she's not gonna be pushy about it. She's just gonna hopefully she will tell you that she recognizes what she was doing and you know just try to smooth things over and not have you upset no, 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 wait a minute now if, if it was reversed I, and, and, that's, I, did, that's, and I did it they would be throwing my ass out of this party and it's not it, I just you're you right know, it's right I, and you need to do something about it I mean you fix the problem or I'm not doing right. that I'm, not oh, that, that's what, I'm, I'm trying I'm trying to fix the problem she apparently has had issues and she may be projecting too much onto people and she's now aware that what she did to you is what guys do to women and get dinged for all the time so she's now aware of it she may not have been aware of it because the way people tell you something is the way you react to it if she was told you shouldn't do that without an explanation going into it why you're doing it what the background is if she doesn't understand that she can't she can't change so I'm hoping that this is going to help her change. So just if, if she apologizes, just accept that. And if it comes up, yes, tell me. Because she's been warned that, you know, this is basically her last chance. We're going to try to get help for her so she learns how to socialize appropriately. I'm a new member here. This is not a very good introduction to this program. She, and, and she, she and is, it, is this? This is not the norm. This is not this the norm. This is not the norm at all. I'll give you one shot here. It yes. just turns out to keep happening. Yeah, I, I, I understand. I, I've been there on the other side of it. We've, we've had to deal with somebody who just was hitting on all the women and chased new, new women away. Um, we don't want that to happen. Um, so it's been explained. And please come to other things. And if you see, and if, if you feel that it's happening, talk, find who's, find the host, find one of the local officers and say something that it's still happening or it's happening to somebody else to make them more aware that it's a situation that is occurring because not everybody sees it. Some people are very outgoing and very touchy and very pushy, but they're friendly and they will take no. Other people may not. So you have to be able to identify who's who. And as a new member, you have nobody. We, we can hook you up with one of the long-term members and have them point out who you should be watching to see if they're coming on too strong. We can do that. We can create a mentor program for your members. That would be good. That would help. We can do that very easily. So please, you know, um, do you do lunch or dinner? Because we have those regularly and we can make sure that we come to one of them as with me even, so that you can see how everybody else reacts. Interact socially. Okay, give it a shot. I've already paid my dues, so yeah, I'm good to lay But I want yeah. you to continue paying. I want you to get something out of this. 
Um, if it's better by the dues paying time, then good. We're going to make it Thank you. You two are great. <laughs> uh, very quickly, and we may go two or three minutes over if that's okay with the group. Um, this is not easily resolved. Right now in Mensa, there is a great concern for member safety. Yes. What's less well defined is what safety really means. And whether, for example, uh, in, in Jamie's scenario, the way I had it written, Jamie complains that, hey, with all this Me Too stuff going on, they say, ask, get consent before you uh, go into sexual activity, for example. Uh, and Jamie complains, that's what I did. I asked, he said, no, I backed off. Uh, that's what you're supposed to do. How can I win this while well, I'm in a lose-lose situation? And there, there is a, uh, right now, safety versus inclusion has become a zero-sum game. And what it, the way it is in Mensa right now, it's one or the other. And that's a false dichotomy. People do have to be safe. Not only that, they have to feel safe or they're gonna leave in droves. By the same token, uh, if somebody is approached by the so-called dirty old man or dirty old woman and takes no for an answer, that's not the worst thing in the world because that's how you're supposed to do it. it you know, I mean, there are May, December relationships and uh, they're not all unwanted. But it's difficult. And the, the main difference is taking no for an answer. But it's, that's not easily resolved because those who are really strong about safety don't even want the question asked. I don't have answers for this one. This is an ongoing problem. The AMC is seized with it. And I think the diversity committee is gonna be seized with it as the difference between uh, again, wants and needs, safety and inclusion, uh, it's not easily solved. So I'm not going to pretend there's an easy solution here, but I'm certainly open to more ideas about how we can handle this and change a win-lose game into a win-win game. Well, I, I, have an, I have an idea about this. What I've discovered at an AG in Florida some years ago is that a lot of people have difficulty saying no. And the people who have trouble saying no, and we are a very introverted group, want people to be mind readers. That's really hard. What's going to be easier to teach people how to say no or teach people how to be mind readers? I think teach people how to say no. I think that's an important part of it. So what happened to me was I actually taught three women how to say no at an AG. There was a guy, nice looking guy. I think he's on the spectrum. And he was approaching different women and saying, listen, he wasn't forcing himself on you. He, I was one of the ones he, for, he approached. And so listen, you know, I find you attractive. I don't do well at relationships. So I would like to come up to my room. We'll just have sex. We won't even talk to each other during, I mean, certainly we'll talk to each other after we'll never see each other again. And these women were so offended. When he came to me, I was like laughing. I'm from Brooklyn. I said, how has this ever worked for you in your life? I said, you're over 50. Has this ever worked for you? He said, no. I said, so then why are you still doing it? So well, I don't know what else to do. I said, if this is what you want, you should hire a prostitute. What regular woman is going to say yes? He said, you know, you're right. Maybe I should. I said, you look like you're well healed. Because I have a lot of money. If this is what you want. Um, the women were so hurt. But in tears, I said, how about saying no? to this? He didn't touch you. He didn't force you. So I actually role played with them with another woman. It took many turns. It's like we're able to say no. And they felt so good that they learned how to say no. So I, it's it's tends to be more of a woman thing, but it's also a male. It's an introvert thing, and maybe we should have some role playing classes in how to say no, not just sexual, uh -huh. but in general. But Joe did say no. Yeah. Y yes. He said, I touched him first. Yes. I mean, in, in the scene, I don't mean. But, but I mean, but a little. I touched him first, and, <coughs> and he was and no. he was backing away. He said no. no. He but he eventually said, no, some people need a little bit more clear. And if you're from New York, like me, where you're touching all the time while you're talking, we really don't, that's part of our culture. Learning how to say no, wow, that's a skill. 
that's going to take you far in life. Know with a period at the end of it. You know, so. <laughs> and, and necessary to know with an exclamation. Point. Yeah. And yeah. so I think that's really a skill that a lot of introverts would do well to learn. That's, that's a very, very good suggestion. What about the people at home before we close this out? Um, if you should read the chat comments. Yeah. Oh, can you, can you get into the chat? <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry, guys. I'm blind as a bat, too. Uh, someone said, aren't they overstepping bounds by offering psychological counseling? So, um, but there was That's no comment the about the no thing. It does. Yeah. It's uh, uh, for whatever well, assistance. And it wasn't like, so much psychological counseling. Well, that was counseling, really? Well, you okay, could suggest that the person speak no, to, speak to his yeah. or her doctor to see whether that would be appropriate. I mean, there's lots of ways you can approach that. Because I wasn't trying to treat for anything. I right. was just trying to get to the root of it and draw it out a little bit and uh, maybe advice. help with ideas. It's counseling. That, that was counseling. That was counseling. That was counseling. I have I have a question about scenario one. Oh, Someone's someone, someone asking a, someone yeah. a question here. Someone yeah. On scenario one, we jumped right to the ombudsman. Now, assuming that they would see the ombudsman in the future, not at the party, uh, I'm, what could the hostess have done and where would the low sick fit in if he were at that party, if there were just those three at the party? No ombudsman, that's the future. How, how could this be handled at the party? Could you repeat the question, please? Oh, how could be handled at the party rather than- at, I, could, I could repeat it. At the party, there's a hostess, there's a problem, and there's a low sick. How could that be handled at the party instead of in the future, what what could be done at the party? In the moment. Okay, well, part of part of the scenario was that the friend uh, tried to calm down the, the problem member. Oh, that was the friend. I thought that was the ombudsman. No, the ombudsman oh. was the last person addressing everyone. Okay, my, my mistake. He, he was, he was being my friend. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one thing, like, one thing that could could be done, for example, if the ombudsman is not at the party. Uh, yeah. I think that's what you're asking. Yeah. And here we have the LOPSEC being the person who feels abused by the criticism. So the LOPSEC is not going to be a major help in resolving it. The friend could take uh, the so-called problem member out for a walk for a few minutes. Just take a break. And... Uh, that and the and the hostess in this case uh, tried to intervene. Right. You know, try try to hold it down. You're embarrassing, et cetera. So um, one one thing is is to break the behavior and take a break, a time out, so to speak, that uh, could calm them down. And that's where the friend comes in. And we can all be friends. To people, and I use the term friends in quotes. It doesn't mean you got to be bosom buddies, but uh, all of us. You don't have to be an officer or an ombudsman to uh, take somebody aside and say, "Look, let's go for a walk. Tell me, tell me what your real gripes are, and uh, basically defuse the situation." That's one approach. I so, like to do the safe word because most people. If they have agreed to respond to a safe word, right. they will. They will, yes. Especially from somebody they but, trust. But, but that's a longer term relationship type thing where you do need a closer, time it a closer friend. Yeah. It's not going to happen the first yeah. time. But I mean, if, if we're, if we're but, already friends in that scenario and we're, we're at a party, we're both at the party yeah. and we are friends, I would be able to trust you enough that you already know me well enough to know that I need my safe word to stop me. And you, I know you well enough that I understand what you're doing. Okay. So it's not just a we first time meeting somebody, it's, it's a friend. Absolutely, and I, I'm glad we got that out there. There's another that is side. Something. Well, that's okay, go ahead. There's another side in real life. I, I'm from New York, and we're very touchy people. Right. And yes. so, Imagine being from New York, being Jewish and being Italian. I yeah, talk, yeah, yeah. Well, you talk my hands behind my back. Well, I can't. You open my try hands. try describing a circular staircase with your hands tied. Yeah, <laughs> but in real life, 
Um, I, because I am and now here because I know better before the scene started, I did ask Joe if it was all right to touch his arm because that's what we do yeah. here. But um, but in real life, if we were if we were sitting just have, none of this was happening, we were sitting at a table and talking. As I'm talking, yeah. there's a good chance me and Joe or any, any of you here, male or female, I would have touched your arm. Yes. Yeah. Just as normal interest. Just right. as normal. And that's hard to Susan. learn not to do also all my life having talked to someone and touched I, an arm. I, I, would, I would love to keep this going. Uh, we, we need to get out of here. We, <laughs> we, we <laughs> have yeah. stepped our time. Sorry. And, um, Just click on end. I, I, I hope that no, people, no. Not, not yet. Oh. Yeah. Um, I hope people have gotten some ideas out of this. The important thing is every one of us can be an ombudsman. Every one of us uh, uh, can be part of the solution rather than part of the problem. Even as problem children. <laughs> yes. And um, like I say, try to turn these problems into uh, assets and uh, uh, contributed. And that doesn't mean that there aren't some times where there is real danger and it needs to be stopped. I think we have to acknowledge not everything can be resolved from this informal channel of, of ombudsman and in, informal dispute resolution. Sometimes it's not the case that that can be resolved. And I, I do want to acknowledge that. But many of them can, and I hope they will be, and that we'll have a uh, if not less conflict, at least more conflicts that are resolved early before they blow up into uh, the need for disciplinary action. And thank you. And I, I want to thank all my actors. And, uh, thank you all. Thank you all thank to you all the, the panel. Yeah, you can start thanks, thanks to the whole panel no. for, for Wait, doing this. Thank you to the whole panel for participating. It's really helpful. Thank You're you for your welcome. thanks. Thank you for being on here. I'm gonna let you turn this off because I'm so bad with technology and um, I don't want to ruin it. There's another one starting immediately. Oh, okay. Really so I'll leave it alone. Okay. Oh, are we having, can I join you for lunch? Um, Ray, are you trying to get me out of here? Oh, maybe you want to stay a little longer, I can. Okay, yeah, I want to, I want to do the last. Uh, LBW. Okay. What is the last LBW? I guess we'll have to do that communication. Ah, who's going to have some Sorry, we went over. You know, Christmas is ruined. Thanks. One of the things that we found was really helpful in Danny, because he's such a great leader, it's something that's such a part of Judaism, which is like the first part of dead speech. Someone can go with a prompt. Am I supposed to do something there? Well, you can see how right any guy can I know that makes it I'm going to have to turn this lid down to get off of here safely. I'm going to go down just for lunch.